as humans, we have a <coughs> we have a very powerful and beneficial intelligence available to us. It's innately available. And in Balanced View, we term this open intelligence. To be introduced to your powerful, beneficial, open intelligence, simply stop thinking just for a moment. What remains when you pause your train of thought is this alertness, this presence, clarity, just the power to know what's looking. So th this open intelligence has never not been with us. We just have not really acknowledged it, noticed it, and clearly named it for what it was. So we can do this in short moments, repeated many times. Acknowledge this vast, wide open intelligence, your power to know. The, the practice of short moments is whenever you naturally remember to do so, you simply let everything be as it is, whether it's your thoughts, your emotions, or sensations, and acknowledge the basis from which all of these appearances, or data as we call them, just to acknowledge that open intelligence is the basis for all of these appearances, for all of these data and descriptions. Now when we, in, when we emphasize open intelligence again and again, it shifts the emphasis away from data reification. What that means is it shifts the emphasis away from giving independent meaning and power to your thoughts, to your emotions, to your sensations, to your inner experience, to your outer experience. And when you shift that emphasis away from relying on reification and you acknowledge this, this power to know, this open intelligence, open intelligence becomes predominant. So, I mean, that's the simplicity of the training. It's just shifting your emphasis, a, a 180 degree shift. The one simple change that makes life totally easy, joyful, powerful, beneficial. So, we've grown up using conventional intelligence, or a closed system of intelligence. And that means that we've been indulging, avoiding, or replacing all of those descriptions. We have a negative thought and we either indulge in it, or we avoid it, or we try to replace it. So say something like, jealousy occurs for us. Now, usually we say that jealousy is something we don't want to experience. You know, all of the repercussions of jealousy, we maybe we get into an argument with our partner or our friends because of the jealousy. We want to discuss it. We start to then feel other emotions because of the jealousy. We get angry, then we get depressed, and then our partner gets depressed, and it just creates this cycle of, of suffering. So that is emphasizing just one emotion emphasizing jealousy and you see how it just flowers into this this um, basically a mess and then this if you try to avoid jealousy you maybe you avoid the people that make you jealous you physically avoid them or then you you try to replace jealousy maybe jealousy comes up and you try to replace it with something positive either positive affirmations I am whole and complete, I'm rich and famous, my partner loves me. <laughs> um, or you try to replace it with exercise or alcohol so you can relax and, and be with that person without feeling the jealousy. You know, we have all of these strategies to not, uh, to not let everything be as it is. So those three means, the indulgence, the avoidance, and the replacement, what they're really doing is limiting our our total open-heartedness and this, our beneficial power in nature. At best, all of, the, all of these strategies, all they do is neutralize our power to be of benefit. They simply just neutralize everything. <coughs> so, for short moments, allow that jealousy to be exactly as it is. You know, it starts as a thought, then it feels like an emotion, then it feels like a sensation. Just let all of that be as it is. Relax the need to describe it. Rely on these short moments of this vast, pristine, open intelligence, your power to know. And then you really start to, to see what is the essence of this jealousy. 
And after a while, it doesn't take very long, you notice that you're just thinking about something else. So essentially that data has self-released. The thought, the emotion, the sensation, it's just effortlessly vanished. Now there are some circumstances in our lives that it doesn't seem like it's this spontaneous release. I mean, what that indicates is just more data reification. The emphasis is shifting back to the, to the descriptions. If we're having a lot of thoughts going on, if we're thinking that they'll instantaneously release and then we're always thinking about what we're thinking about, it can be very tense and uptight. <clears throat> I can just share my own experience. The, all of the internal mutter has just quieted down through the practice of short moments and relying on the four mainstays of balanced view. You know, thinking about how this process works where we shift out of this emphasizing negative, neutral, and positive into this open-hearted expanse of friendship, love, and benefit, it really comes about just simply by showing up. I mean, we don't have to really think about it. So if you do find yourself thinking about it, you know, reach for the support of the Four Mainstays. Listening to the trainers, listening to audio downloads, watching videos, participating in clarity calls, coming to open meetings, we hear very empowered words about the true nature of human identity. And that helps shift this emphasis away from, again, just constantly thinking about it. We can actually relax into this power. We relax into our inherent beneficial power we start to see that even if we're having loads of thoughts, if we're not emphasizing them, they, they just pass on by, like the breeze in the air passes on by. Or like a tornado in the air, it's just full power and then it just burns itself out. <coughs> so we don't need to constantly be engaged in all of the thinking process. We simply take short moments engage in the training, write to our trainer if it's, if it's something very afflictive. If we need to make a very important decision and we're, we're racked with which decision to make, that's the important time to write to your trainer and ask for guidance and support. A trainer is somebody who has tested out the Four Mainstays in all circumstances, has gained assurance and confidence and open intelligence to see that there are just infinite skillful means available to us the solutions that we may not have seen before because we were basing it only on the descriptions. We open up into this vast solution-oriented space. All solutions are already present in the here and now. We're just tapping into this. So the trainer is someone who can support us in this process, who can guide us back. You know, they can see when we're emphasizing data and they can gently and directly guide us back to the to this open intelligence and the community also just spending time with community helping in volunteer work we it, it's like it rubs off you know, this open intelligence way of relating where we're not so focused on our thoughts or descriptions we're not seeking uh, well-being from all of these amazing experiences, we start to recognize that every single moment is this adventure we have been seeking. And a community of people demonstrating this is very powerful. You can see the results in another person. You can see that when we come together and we decide we've had enough of gossiping, criticizing, complaining, we, we actually, we come together and we find many solutions. It's really the solution-orientated way of, of being. Um, we're all here to empower one another rather than disempowering another person through something like jealousy. You know, hoping that the other person might mess up so we'll look better. Or that, you know, oh, that those two people over there, I want, that, I want her or him and I hope the other person does something wrong so I can get with that person. I mean, that's a very natural thought, but, you know, we see that's very disempowering. And we just naturally shift out of that way of relating to people. We don't have to contrive ourselves when we feel this, this jealousy. We don't have to contrive a way to become altruistic or open-hearted. You simply let everything be as it is. All of your data is just resting in this pure expanse of, of benefit. 
the positive data are also resting naturally. The negative data, they're resting naturally. And the neutral as well. They have no power or influence of their own to affect our well-being. We're not victims of this. And we can really live this, this joyful life, a flourishing life, having a sense of flourishing. You know, moving out of this, this uh, mediocrity, shifting out of this era of negativity, and we're really in this era of great benefit. It's here and now, all of us sitting together. Every human being has the same potential to tap into this, this beneficial open intelligence that is the birthright of every single being. <clears throat> and, you know, if, we're, if it still seems like there's a doer and a, and a doing and we're watching all of the data and it still seems like um, a separate individual, that just mellows out as well. You know, it's like a cat watching a mouse. The cat being open intelligence, we're very hypervigilant of all the, the mouse data. That really mellows out when we rely on the mainstays. You know, I was that way. I was really focused in that after being introduced to the training and completing the 12 empowerments, I was very aware of all of my data streams. And starting to let everything be as it was, it was very powerful. All the things I'd been repressing, all the things I'd been avoiding, everything that I'd been indulging for my well-being, when I decided to start not engaging in that, it was a whole new way of living. But with the support of my trainer, the support of the trainings, the community, and, and taking many short moments, it really dawned on me that there was this... I had nothing to prove. I felt okay with myself, with all of my circumstantial data streams. I felt okay with my negativity. Anything that came up as positive, just allowing it to be and actually seeing it, it's quite enjoyable, but I don't have to hold on to it for my well-being and all the mundane things that were happening through the day, also an opportunity, if it was just kind of boring, just to simply rest and acknowledge the basis, this powerful open intelligence, to really see that I, could, I didn't any longer have to neutralize everything, or to change it, or rearrange it, manipulate it. And that created this space for relaxation, starting to go a lot easier on myself, to go easier on others, to stop blaming people, to stop criticizing. My way of speaking with people changed. You know, having, shifting away from criticizing and putting people down to finding empowered ways to speak with people. And making friends became really easy. You know, no longer having to find friends that had the exact same sets of opinions and beliefs and assumptions that I had in order to have a friendship. You know, going beyond all of these very limited ideas, whether they're cultural or just your opinions about the way things should work, and really seeing a friend in everyone. You know, seeing that we on this planet, we're just meant to all be friends. We don't have to like another's opinion or belief to really see that they're a shining example of this perfect love.